Hello again, a warm welcome to The Ref Show. Keith Hackett, we see you uh, quite often on the panel. Mm. Welcome, Keith. Not so often, Gary Megson, but it's great to welcome you back to the You Are The Ref studio, Gary, having had a short spell back in management at West Bromwich Albion, which uh, you were unbeaten. I think you enjoyed. Yeah, I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed both, the, uh, both the games. And, um, you know, I was at West Brom for, I don't know, about four and a half months as, um, as assistant with, um, with Tony Pulis. Uh, I found the assistant role harder than the actual managing uh, role because um, you know I'd not done it before and I'm, I'm used to only being a manager. So um, when I took over in the uh, in the interim, as it turned out, only ten days, that was a, that was a lot easier for me to do and um, a lot more enjoyable for me in terms of uh, a job. Did you, have you got a taste for it again? Yeah, not not just from that, from being alongside Tony because I went I went in and. Um, you know what? What you do miss is the day-to-day -day stuff in terms of um, you know being in the dressing room, out on the uh, training pitch, and having a a bit of banter and a bit of a laugh with the uh, the players and such. And also the uh, the work that you're doing in terms of coaching. It's um, <clears throat> it is like riding a bike. You know, the first day you're a bit apprehensive, but then you know everything that you've done in the past comes comes straight back to you. So mm -hmm. it has wet, wetted my appetite. Yeah, okay. very much back in the shop window uh, <laughs> as well. And you, you'll never get a time in football when there isn't a change of managers at various places. So we'll, we'll talk about that uh, later on. Your two games uh, in charge and one or two, well, several of the Premier League talking points and championship over the weekend. Actually, you were back at your former club Sheffield Wednesday at the weekend, 2-2 uh, draw with Hull. You've not been back there since you left. <coughs> <coughs> no, because it's... Um, I haven't worked for quite a while, and I, the, the first year they stuck me on garden leave, which you know I, I think is an mm. abhorrent thing, me. But anyway, I, I got two offers of jobs during that time that I didn't take because of the garden leave. The year after, I really tried to get back into it, and I, I wasn't getting anywhere, so I thought, well, I don't particularly need it, so I didn't, I didn't bother. Um, now it's changed a little bit because, as I say, it's whetted my appetite. I've seen what's going on in uh, in football. I think I've got a lot to offer football club so I'm going back and, uh, and watching games and you know Sheffield Wednesday, Sheffield United, Barnsley they're all very local I know people at all of them so I'll, I'll get myself out there watching games. Mm. Okay Hull City are looking for a manager at the moment. Yeah that'd be a good move. You saw them at the weekend? <laughs> but yeah, yeah I just saw them against Wednesday yeah so it was um, you know it was, it was an entertaining game but you know I'm, uh, I'm going just to keep going and keeping, uh, keeping my hand in. Mm -hmm. Okay, well let's have a look uh, at the Sunday games first of all in the Premier League. Um, we're going to breeze through this so that we can involve Gary in mm. football topics as well as refereeing ones. Manchester City 2, West Ham 1 and Mike Dean are on form there. 13 league wins in a row for, uh, for Manchester City. Two informed factors about that game. Mike Dean, I think, uh, scored hi highly on ref camp. Yeah, I think, uh, well, he's an experienced referee. Yeah. And I think an experienced referee is able to sit out of the game not get involved yeah. and, and allow the players to express themselves. And when, when you actually look at the uh, quality of, of the players on show, it's just quite remarkable. I mean, Manchester City are going to take some beating, aren't they? Mm. I think everybody agrees there. The South Coast derby raised a, a bigger issue. Uh, mm. John Moss was in charge of this, a 1-1 draw between Bournemouth and Southampton. Now, at 0-0, and Gary, we've been talking about diving regularly. We'd, we'd rather not be talking about it, but mm. players have done things that have ensured that we do talk about it almost on a weekly basis. Other side of the coin here, at nil-nil, Bournemouth's Adam Smith, in the view of all the experts, wrongly cautioned oh. for diving. Bournemouth denied a penalty, and Smith now faces a one-match suspension under totting up, but says that John Moss, following the game, apologised to him for making an error, Keith. Well, I, I think it's good that John Moss has done that. I mean, we, we've been his biggest critic, I think, but this season, he seems to have settled down a bit and, and refereeing well. You know, judging for referees at the highest level, whether it's a dive or not, is a difficult scenario mm -hmm. with the quality of players and the reactions. Uh, so now he's got this one wrong. And, and fair play to him, if he has come out and he's admitted he's got it wrong, now there's a dilemma. Because obviously, had he awarded the penalty kick, caution for simulation, there's a risk then that uh, that player gets a yellow card. If uh, that decision, and he's not given a yellow card, he gets a two-match suspension if he goes through the review panel. So I think now, given the FA brought this in, they've got to look at this yellow card. Now, I know that the FA will hide behind the fact that <clears throat> they can never rescind a yellow card. Yeah. Well, I think on this one, they've For got sure. to. 
And maybe for that... the fairness of the player, mm. who's been issued with a yellow card that's incorrect, accused of diving, which I think is the worst thing that you can... It's a little bit like a, a yeah. player calling a referee a, a, referee a cheat. Maybe so I think you've got to do something Maybe set it. a precedent as well if that yellow card <coughs> is rescinded, which is against the regulations. They are. Well, Gary, if players didn't dive, and there's still, I think, you might agree too much of it, we wouldn't be having this kind of conversation. Yeah, I've said it before, and I'd like, you know, when, when you get a suspension, like the player <coughs> commits the offence, who gets punished is the club. Yeah. If you said, like, we we'll take that away, you can play next week, but we're, uh, we're finding you two weeks' wages for it, you'd soon cut it out. That's your solution then? Yeah. Just yeah, but not the club find them. No. The FA find them, the Premier League find them. They take two weeks off them yes. for, for diving. All of a sudden, they commit the offence, they pay the penalty, two weeks' wages, but they can play next week. You see it entirely different. Isn't there mm. a responsibility as well on the part of the managers to publicly condemn it? Yeah. Which they don't do. Well, no, they don't, because you've got to look after your player, you've got to look after your club, but I, I don't, I've never done it, and I've never heard Tony do it in the last four months, throw yourself over. We, we had an instance, just lis listening to, uh, to Keith there, about referees apologising. Bobby, I think it was Bobby Madley, we took uh, West Brom down to Arsenal. Mm. Jay Rodriguez is through, and he pulls the ball back behind him, <clears throat> and he gets brought down, and it's a penalty, but he jumps back up, there's no diving about, he jumps back up, mm. he shoots, keeper tips it against the post, it comes out to one of ours and he misses a sitter. Mm -hmm. So there was all sorts happening really quickly. But he, afterwards, uh, he, he came out and he came out with two different things. Mm -hmm. Instead of just doing as Keith just suggested that, look, I've messed that up. He came out and said, first of all, he played advantage, but he didn't do. <laughs> like, yeah. he, he wasn't going to give anything at all. So, you know, I think it, it, you've got to have honesty from everybody and not try, you know, that, I'm not saying he did. But if the referee looked at that and thought, well, how can I get out of this? You know, yeah. I thought I'd, I played advantage. He didn't play advantage. So, right. you know, I, th I think sometimes it's, it's, it sticks in your throat a little bit. I've had uh, two referees when I was in the Premiership before <coughs> yeah. uh, say I made a mistake, but there's nothing you can do. You don't publicise it because it's private, but it's, uh, mm. it, it really does stick in the throat. There's all sorts of ways of looking at it, I suppose, yeah. but we'd all like to see it out of the game. And some of the antics must absolutely disgust and appall you from... Yeah, the well, kind of game that you play. <coughs> yeah, it? but you know, with that, that game at uh, Arsenal, it, it was like practising free kicks from 20 yards. They've got <laughs> players, and they're clever, and they're going across the box. The, the better mm. the players, they're going across the box, and they're not going across looking to shoot. They're going, waiting <coughs> for the contact, over they go, and then they get a free kick, which mm. is what they scored from after the uh, fourth attempt. I don't want to see yeah. it. And Let's that's the see. point that you raised, Alan, a couple of weeks ago, that there was a general feel that if there's contact, yeah. it can't be simulation. Yeah. And, and the FA, but I think, fact, made that point very clear. There can be s a contact and simulation. And simulation. Mm. Let's just have a, a brief look at uh, Gary's games, just in, <coughs> in, in part one. We've got two big red card uh, debate. I'm not even sure there's a debate, but to talk about in uh, part two from the Premier League and also Championship. Your two games, Gary, unbeaten. You start at Wembley uh, against Spurs. You're, you're leading there and uh, unfortunately for you, Spurs get an equaliser, it finishes 1-1. And then you draw 2-2 with Newcastle having been 2-0 up. First game, there's, uh, there's some several yellow cards and uh, Mike Jones is in charge. Second game, Lee Probert's in charge. There's no cards whatsoever, I think, in that game. I don't recall you mentioning either referee. Is that a good uh, sign well, that, for that? That's a, a thing that we were talking about. How you, there's a perception of you. Mm. And I, my perception, oh, he's shouting and he's doing that. And I don't shout at referees. I, and I don't criticise referees because I think it's an almighty <laughs> difficult job. I couldn't do it. Yeah. And, uh, and I do have a laugh and a joke with him on the side because... Um, I think it was Mike Dean, he, he was the fourth official, official. Line, and I'm like, what the hell are you doing on here? And he's gone. So you have a, a little bit of that. And I think you've got to have a little bit of that, but it's, there's so much pressure on them. And, and what's happening, it's getting harder and harder. What, the, the daft thing that happens now, it was my job, Tony gave it me, thanks very much. <laughs> Before the game, I'm having to do the team sheets. Yeah. And people won't know that you, they've now brought it in electronically. So you've got to get it all done on your iPad, Boom, off it goes at half past one. And it takes yeah. a little bit of time to do it. Quarter of an hour later, you then have to take it paper form and give it to the match mm. manager. Quarter of an hour after that, you then have to take the captain in and then he talks to the two mm. captains and the uh, whoever's in there, yeah. the official from whichever club. Yeah. So there's half an hour of all that trying to go on, yeah. but the referee has got to try and sort out and make everything um, 
Yes. Right before he even R kicks off. Rather a lot of red tape. Just but anyway, bit. Mego's not the monster that you think he is, uh, where referees are concerned. <laughs> and just finally, with 30 seconds to go of part one, uh, Alan Pardew's in charge now. His first game, a nil-nil draw at home to Crystal Palace. Um, I suppose that's given not the a bad circumstances, point for I think it's a good point given the circumstances because yeah. um, you know the Wednesday before we we had a really difficult game at Tottenham. We play on the uh, on the Tuesday. We got five injuries, and then Alan's got another one on top of that. So, and it's not a a really it's a big enough squad, but the depth isn't particularly there. So it's a decent start. Michael Oliver is in charge of that. Very much an informed referee mm. and an mm. emerging superstar of referee. And I think yeah. our ref show yeah. panel have consistently said loads to talk about in part two, including Gary's return to watch uh, former club Sheffield Wednesday at Hillsborough at the weekend. Uh, do rejoin us for that.